any ritual should have the capacity to deepen your mindfulness, to be present to the world around you, to be grateful for all the people who are around you. We're able in a ritual to affirm belief in a way that isn't just cerebral. Our whole body is engaged in the act of making a connection. And in the whirling, it becomes a meditation. It's an ecstatic state, but over the years, it's become an art form. They do not call it a performance. I would not call it a performance. It is a spiritual offering. This is a rite of passage in the young man's life, usually between eight and 16 years of life. The rite of passage into adulthood is a fraught time, probably more so for the parents than for the kid. And so we have these practices in many traditions where a child has to undergo a great deal of learning, a great deal of preparation, where the child is told beforehand, this is what's expected of you. Pilgrimage is one of the most complex rituals in, in any tradition. It takes an enormous amount of preparation. It takes a lot of physical strength. It takes a lot of endurance. It takes a willingness to potentially encounter danger. It is difficult to make one of these journeys. You're traveling to uh, another country multiple time zones away. You're staying in unfamiliar places. You're eating unfamiliar foods. And you are putting yourself out of your comfort zone. And that's part of it. They allow us to play a role in a story in which we are one of the main characters. And we are connecting to the sacred narratives of our tradition. It's in the wilderness where God speaks to Moses. It's in the wilderness where the people get the teachings of the Torah. On Passover, we're, we're taught to embody the story, to act out the story. And so when we walk through the desert, we really get that idea of freedom. On Epiphany, Orthodox churches around the world hold a special worship service. It's a time when the people come together to celebrate the liturgy. It's also a time when the people come together to celebrate the great blessing of water. And so many of our washing rituals prepare an individual for an encounter with God. There's a common expression that says cleanliness is next to godliness. The idea of lifting up our hands to do God's work or spiritual work rather than, you know, our hands are doing mundane things. A ritual helps us deal with the chaos of life. May only love surround. When we're sick, we just feel so alone. We feel that God has abandoned us. Many healing rituals involve water, like going to Lourdes. They involve community, people being with you. They involve chanting that take you away from your pain. Ritual is particularly powerful at the time of death. Even though we expect death, it astonishes us. It leaves us without words. And even people who aren't religious will turn to the death rituals, the burial rituals and practices of their traditions because these traditions tell them this is what to do. The shofar on Rosh Hashanah is supposed to signify our crying out to God. When a new year comes, we're hoping that we're going to be there for that whole year. Most new year practices use food or music or, or sound to hope for an auspicious new year. Our hope for peace is often expressed through our prayers, the prayers of our voices, the prayers of creating lanterns. We realize that our wishes for peace and our paths are always connected with so many others. We believe that 
God wants us to perform these rituals. I am an usher because uh, God has given me that talent. He also has given me a, a blessing to be a blessing to others. Mm -hmm.